Hey guys, Omerko here, self-taught web developer. In this video we will work with the component DevKit for accessibility uh, from Angular Material. Before we start with this video be sure to subscribe as I am posting a new content weekly so don't miss any of those. Now let's start. First of all, for what can we use CDK accessibility? Well, the development community has been working on this for, well, many years now, and that is to enable people with disabilities to access the web, websites and applications more easily. A straightforward example for that could be that uh, when we open up our select menu, we would pre-select at least the first option in that menu. That will obviously immediately help users, especially those that require help. Now, we won't build such a select menu as using those simple controls where it is quite easy. Instead of that, we will build a form with multiple input fields, and we will be able to move through those input fields with our arrow keys. That example as well will give additional support for our users. To create such an example, we will first need to create the component where we will use that accessibility. So, for that, open your terminal and use ng g for generate, c for component, and I will generate my component in components slash cdk slash accessibility. Once your component is generated, open your code editor and in app.component.html file, first thing that I will do is I will hide my toolbar component from the last video. If you wish to watch that video, you will have a link down in the description of this one. Now, after this toolbar, I will use my component that I just generated, which is App Accessibility. At this point in your browser, we should see just the dummy text from that component. So let's put some content to it, let's create that form. For that, open your accessibility.component.html file. In this file, first of all, I will create a div. This div will hold a style attribute, and in this style attribute, I will set margin to be 50 pixels top and bottom, and auto for left and right. Next to that, I will set the text align to be center. Now, let's create our form. To this form, I will pass a role of dialog. If you wish to use accessibility for material, you will need to pass a specific role where you want to use it. Now that we have our form, we can create a few input fields inside. To create the input field, I will first use mat form field element from material, and to it, I will pass the appearance of fill to style these input fields more nicely. Inside of this form field, we can now create the mat label, and to that mat label, I will pass a text of your name. Next to the label, I will also create a simple input field. Now, this simple input field will be styled with mat input attribute. Also, it will use placeholder of enter your name. And with that, we have our input field and also our label for that input field. Let's create more of those so we could use our arrow keys to route through those input fields. I will simply copy this same input field two more times. We can also now change the text and placeholders, so the second one can be for the email and the third one can be for the address. The smart thing to do here is to add a local reference to our form and also the form elements inside that we have. That way, Angular Material will later know which feature will use those arrow keys. At this point, we have our form fully created, so we just need to add a bit of functionality, so for that, open up the accessibility.component.ts file. We will use viewchild to get those elements that we just made a reference to, which is our form and our form field. Ensure that the form itself is an element ref, while our input fields will be a query list. As we will manage our arrow keys, I will create a variable called the key manager. Now, we need also to ensure that our keyboard, whenever we press a specific key, will do something for us. The only thing that we need to do here is to allow such a thing. To do that, I will use host listener from Angular, and I will listen for the key up event. Once that event happens, we can run a function to expect such an event. I will name my function key function. In this function, we can check if the key press was not a tab. If that is the case, we can focus on a specific element through our key manager. Otherwise, we can just set the following item to be active. Now that we allowed these key events, we can use ng after view init lifecycle hook from Angular. 
inside of this lifecycle hook, we can specify which input field should be focused. Next to that, we can also specify the orientation, like from left to right, and also wrap everything inside of our key manager. At this point, if you are getting any errors related to imports, take a look at mine imports and make sure to reuse the same ones. Because all of these features that we used are related to Angular or Angular material. Hence, those must be imported appropriately to be used. But now we can test this. Open your local host and you should have a material form presented. Click on the first input field. From here, by using the left and right arrows, you will jump from field to field. So, we can enter some data, use the arrow to move to the following field, populate that one and so on. By this here, you can already see that this kind of feature can definitely help people with disabilities. But guys, this will be all for this video. Thank you all for watching. Please click like and subscribe if you liked what you saw as I am posting a new content weekly. Thank you once again and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.